If you are a grown ass adult and you've ever uttered the phrase, I'm bored, then you're probably a horrible person. <laughs> Blues in America is, uh, is at a, a absolute low point. Well, I mean, hardly, there's, there's nobody left that was like, you know, the old guys that were like the legends, they're all gone, Right. all of them, you know? The people that, uh, you know, we, when we first started out playing, that we got to pick with and Clarksdale and some of the Blues Fest around, it, you know, people like T. Model Ford and Honey Boy Edwards and Robert Belfort and Paul Wine Jones. And, like these guys, they, they're gone. And, you know, the, uh, I, I don't know that the world really appreciated what they had before they were gone. I mean, B.B. King's gone. You name it. I mean, just, yeah. everybody's gone. So, you know, the, there's a little bit of that. The, and, and then also, too, there's like this perfect storm of there is no format for blues anywhere. There's no radio stations that can really play it. There's no anything. Yeah, I don't know where people would find new blues music other than just going out and seeking it. You have it. to literally go out and seek it. You yeah. know? And, but it doesn't mean that I'm going to stop doing what I do. You know what I mean? Like I, I, and also, too, I think it, it opens the door for us. Like, you know, for a long time, blues in, in the United States was really, really... Like it got to be really cheesy, twelve bars and turnarounds and da dun da dun da dun da dun, right. just like it was, you know, just take it or leave it, you know. I have always felt responsibility to it for a, a bunch of different reasons, you know, and I, I continue at shows to sort of talk history about certain things and what I'm doing and and what I'm all about, and I hope to always do that, at least a little bit, you know. I. I I don't want uh, you know our shows to ever become too clinical. I think that's boring. That's not what it's all about. But I think that people should know a little bit about where it's coming from. Because every now and then someone will go, "You're my favorite bluegrass band." It's like, well, I've never played bluegrass ever. <laughs> so really, we're we're really not your favorite bluegrass band. I you promise know? you, we're not your favorite bluegrass band. <laughs> you might like us a yeah. lot, <laughs> but we are not your favorite bluegrass band. Right. But you know, it's, a lot of times people just don't know what what the the rural blues is. You know, they they yeah. know Stevie Ray Vaughan and his multitude of followers, and not that Stevie Ray, there's anything wrong with Stevie Ray, Stevie Ray's great, it's just not what we're all about, you yeah. know. I, I sort of start from an earlier place. I mean, it's the instrumentation is a big part of it for you. You're still playing, what is it, is it a national that you're playing? Yeah, national guitars, resonating guitars. How old guitars. is that national of yours? Well, I'll be playing one today on stage that's a 1930 national. Is there a story behind it? Where'd you get it? Well, I got it from, uh, it's, there is kind of a story behind it. So the 1930 national that I play, it's a steel body triolene. So, and there's, you know, there's different models, the 1930s and 20s ones. And it's the triolene. So when I first got it, it was in a box, literally. I heard about this guy selling a national guitar for 300 bucks. So I had to jump on it. You know, like it's a proper years. national guitar. Yeah. So I was like, bucks. I was like, oh, I got to find this. I got to find out. Cause you know, they, they would, they would be like $3,000. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so the guy shows up with a box and I, with all the pieces of this guitar in the, in the box. And it's like, and I thought, well, you know, for 300 bucks, I could probably sell the body on the internet if I have to or something, you know? So, so I, I got it. And, and, uh, when I'm talking to the fella, he's like, well, you know, it did have this really ugly, like someone painted it this really ugly yellow brown paint and painted these palm trees on it. And we took that paint off because it was just so ugly. And I'm like, that's the original paint. Really? Yeah, so the guy removed the original 1930 paint job that was... He had no idea. He had no idea. He didn't know what you really had. So, so then I have a steel body national guitar. And a, and a, you know, a friend of mine, uh, his name's Ben Taylor, has been a long time luthier he, for me, uh, he brought it back to life, you know, got it playing again. And, but it still didn't have paint on it. It's still a steel body guitar with no paint. So the reason they painted the steel body guitars is so they wouldn't rust. Okay. So it starts to... That's the to, protective coat. Yeah, yeah, it has to have like chrome on it, or a lot of them were brass. Right. They weren't actually steel, you know, so then they wouldn't rust. But these are, you know, the trialings were steel. So this thing starts rusting. And one time in, in Missouri, it, there was a... Uh, we were on stage playing this festival and we're, we're like sound checking, you know, getting ready to, to go on. And there's a bad storm coming. Everyone's like, man, this is a storm coming. I'm talking to the promoter myself personally. I'm like, man, like this is looking rough. Like what's the plan? He's like, this stage is rock solid. There's going to be no problems. Just don't worry about it. Get tuned up and go and we'll be fine, you know. So this little tornado starts coming up. Well, it, it looks like a big dust devil to me, you know, like what you see like in cornfields, you know. And I was like thinking to myself, like, that's the biggest dust deal I've ever seen, you know. Then it starts picking up 50-gallon drums of trash they're using as trash cans full and throwing them over the trees. So it's like, okay, 
it's not a dust devil. <laughs> and I, I didn't know, but there's a, a little tiny tornado that happens like in certain parts of the world and in the Ozarks in Missouri, they, they, they're known for it. They're called microbursts. It's a little tornado. Who, who, who knew? You know, it's big tornadoes and little ones. So this thing starts coming right toward us. When, when, when it started throwing those trash cans, those 50-gallon barrels full of trash, everyone's running for their lives, all the fans. They're, it's literally every man for himself, you know. So I'm like, save the guitars, you know. That's all I can think of, save the guitars. <laughs> so we start throwing them, you know, in, in our van. You know, this has been years ago. And th this was after the thing ripped the roof off the stage we were standing on. Oh, I thought it was rock solid. Yeah, and twisted it. And it caused it to go around the stage. Holy so cow. It, so it, uh, it, that, that caused it to change course and saved us. I don't know what would happen if it hit us. It was right, literally right toward the stage. And er, er, like, everyone's hiding underneath the stage. They're running. I, I, I was just still with my guitars. It was like, I had to save the guitars. So that thing got rained on really bad. And then water all inside it and everything. And after that point, it really rusted bad. I mean, bad. Like... Over to the, the point years, where you couldn't use it? To, to the point where I couldn't use it. But yeah. recently I, I cleaned it up and it revealed this really neat patina. It definitely looks amazing now. Yeah. That I know of, it's the only national trial union like it because, you know, how many of them, someone was dumb enough to, like, a, they used some kind of electronic process to remove the paint. They were, like, really scientific about it. So it, it didn't scratch it or anything. And then the thing completely rusted and then I took the rust off. So the patina is legit. <laughs> I don't think that we need blue societies. I don't think we need any of that stuff. What we need is people out there playing good music that other people want to hear. And if you want to help the state of blues music in this country, then what you need to do is go out and see those people that are legit, that are doing it, they're doing it right, and promote that. That's the best way to keep something alive. It's just keep, it's just to, be, to do it and to do it right and to do it in a way that people think is, is worth hearing. You know, and then, then music isn't relegated to museums and it, you, know, you don't have to have societies trying to save it. You know, instead, fans save it by buying records and going to their record store going, make sure there's a blues section here because I, I want to have it. You know, a lot, of, a lot of record stores have got rid of their blues section. It's crazy. You know, I mean, the, the most American form of music that we have you know, and it, it, you're starting to see it disappear from record stores. It's crazy. You have a, a unique voice, though, now because of your podcast. You can talk about blues on there, too. And maybe... Yeah, was, what's great about the podcast, we can talk about anything. And, and uh, I, you know, we've been focusing on road stories and, and everything. But, you know, it's, it's, it's our podcast and it's free. So, you know, by God, we'll talk about whatever we want. But uh, I've been trying to tell some cool blues stories from, like, our beginnings, you know, and, like playing with some of the, the fellas that, you know, I think more people should – have paid attention to before they passed on. And if you had to give somebody one name to go back and listen to? Robert Belfour. Robert Belfour? Yeah, go listen to Robert Belfour. Robert Belfour was a friend of mine that died uh, just a few years ago and should have been, you know, I mean, headlining blues festivals and, you know, he was a giant of a musician. It was a very somber, eye-opening day for me because we passed, we, we drove through Bulgaria and we were told that we were the first country blues band to maybe ever play in Bulgaria. And you know, this has just been a couple years ago. Huh. So we're driving through Bulgaria and we drive past packs of dogs tearing apart trash. There's all these slums. I'm talking slums like maybe you expect to see like uh, in India or something, you know, homes made out of trash. But all of the homes that were like made out of all this stuff, They've all got satellite TV on them, which I thought was really nuts. Like, I don't have satellite TV, but, you know, but we drive past all this stuff. And then they're like, okay, so I was thinking, God, where are we going to stay? What's this going to be like? You know, and this is, it's so interesting when you're out of the country anyway. And then we show up at this hotel. And I, honest to God, it was the nicest hotel I think I've ever stayed at. And all the years doing this and all the places people put us up and everything. The room had, uh, 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 in the bathroom, all right, there was a switch you could flip to turn on music in the bathroom. I guess in case you had like some loud diarrhea or something, I don't know. It's interesting how, how it is in different countries, how people experience music, how they take yeah. it in. You know, Americans uh, tend to, to sort of really like get in it, you know, and move and, and uh, kind of let themselves go. And, and Europeans 
can be a little more reserved. Yeah. So when you, uh, the are first they more polite times, though? Or are they? Quieter? Oh, very polite. I mean, you can hear a pin drop. I think like I'm getting old, dude, because I go to shows now, and if people are talking next to me, I'm <laughs> sort of like, hey, man, I'm actually trying to listen, and yeah. it's like I hear that, and I can't, I hyper focus on it. Yeah, yeah. I want a polite crowd these days. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I like it when a crowd is is polite when it, it's time to be polite right. and then loses their freaking mind when it's time to lose their mind. There's a know? difference between cheering and having fun and singing with the band and then and talking, talking to about your, your weekend. Yeah, yeah. Or, or looking on your phone. That's the worst, man. It's I like, can't handle it. You know, even, even when people are like, a lot of times people meet, they take a picture and then they're trying to Instagram it right then, you right. know, and it's like, man, do that after the show, you know, like. Put it away. It's going it, to, the show's only going to last so long. Do it after the show, you know. Yeah. It's, uh, I appreciate, you know, people uh, being excited about it and want to post on their on, on their pages, but man, do it after the show. If this hadn't worked out, if it all went to hell, yeah. and I, and like, you know, people stopped coming out to see shows or, or, you know, something like that happened, then I, I think it's one of two things. Professional fishing guide or bank robber. I think that's all I'm cut out to do now. Why not both? <laughs> <laughs> I've been ruined uh, doing yeah. this. I've been ruined too long. I'm too spoiled. I, 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 I love traveling doing this and I, I don't know. I couldn't go back to to, to live in like I used to. I couldn't do it. Do you fish a lot now when you get a oh, chance? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we travel. I, in, with us right now, you know, I personally have three saltwater poles, two bass rods, uh, two fly rods, and a backup uh, collapsible travel rod that's always in my backpack no matter what. That's right. just what's on the road with us right now. And that doesn't include what Max has. You know, and, you got a set too. Yeah, Max has got. Yeah, I got two salt poles and a fly rod and a bass rod. I got four poles. So is it just yeah. hey, if we see a creek or something, we just pull oh, over? Oh, we we fish. We have fished fish literally. Yesterday. Yeah, we fished yesterday. Well, here's what here's my plan. I'm giving away something here, but if I shave my beard, a guy could walk into a bank no one's ever seen before. Because I've had this beard since seventh grade. Seventh grade? I would suggest a clue. Yeah, maybe a clothing change yeah, too. Maybe put on sleeves, right? Yeah, put on sleeves. <laughs> <laughs> I hate sleeves. Yeah, Damn. I don't even know what I look like because I haven't. I've had a beard since seventh grade. I have no idea. Man, I've been shaving since fifth grade. You're a hairy bastard. Yeah, definitely. There's no downtime. There's not a lot of times where I'm just like doing nothing. And when I am, when there is downtime, I'm usually writing. That's great. I mean, uh, I see. I'm the kind of person that if you said, "Oh, you never have to work again for the rest of your life." I would be like, that's great because I wouldn't get bored. I can. There's enough books to read and music to play. And there is a million things to do. Sure. There's, you know, pick up a hobby, find some, like volunteer for somebody, you know, uh, go and support the arts, read a book, you know, clean your house. I mean, there's a, I mean, if you are a grown ass adult and you've ever uttered the phrase, I'm bored, then you're probably a horrible person. Yeah. Then you need to reevaluate your entire existence on yep. this planet because. I would love to have all of their time. Blues is my main thing. Yeah. My guilty pleasure is definitely 80s and 90s country music. <laughs> and I talk to people about it, you know, and it's so funny. You go back and listen to that stuff. And at the time, you know, people would be like, man, this ain't country. You know, this ain't country. And it's like, God, what would you give to, for country music now to sound like Alabama? I was about to say, it's more country then. Oh my God, like, I, like that stuff's amazing. You know, when you're in retrospect, it's like, you know, if, if, if only everybody on country radio now sounded like Alabama, it, you know. I would take it in a heartbeat. And Randy Travis, and you know, it, it'd, be, it'd be perfect. I don't understand. I don't know what happens with the, with the music business. I don't know who's running the show. I really don't. Because as we're traveling around, you know, the fans we run into, like, I don't meet people that are like, oh, man, I, you know, th this bro country stuff just really gets me going. Like, I've never met that person. Like, they're, maybe they're out there somewhere. Like, they have to be because maybe they're buying records and buying tickets. But... I mean, at all the festivals and shows and everybody I run into, you know, they, they seem like they're into, you know, more real, rootsy, handmade music. Yeah. I, I just don't get it. I don't, know, I don't know what's driving that. I'll show you this right here. I put your hand up next to mine. Okay. And open it up as wide as it can go. Look how wide that is. I can, Keep my hand's brief, almost man. like a starfish. Like I can make it complete. I don't know if your camera can see how, how crazy wide that is. But look how weird. Yes, I can see it, does, it. it looks like an alien hand. It doesn't look like a human hand. Now watch this. Let me see. I'll, I'll try to look in the camera there and see. Right, I'll show you so I can get your, <laughs> yeah. your reaction. Okay. Here. Good grief. So here, let me see if you can get. Oh. Can you see that in the camera? Oh, turn it sideways. Can you see that there? What happened? 
nothing. It's just natural. That's my hands just do that. <laughs> I hate sleeves.